negative. Michael Graves says he never knew the defendant existed until a few months ago, but he now believes she is his biological daughter. So he petitioned the court for a paternity test. Defendant Brooke Robert has wanted to find her biological father for 32 years, and she found Michael through an online ancestry test. Brooke claims after meeting in person for the first time last night, she just knew he was her dad, but she's still eager for the test results. All right, let's start with you. Well, Your Honor, um, I believe Brooke is my daughter. Uh, I was able to meet uh, Brooke uh, last night face to face. Uh, so I want to say thank you for flying us in, uh, making my first dream. time. Yes. Wow. Okay. All right. Making my dream uh, possible, you know, yeah. to meet my daughter. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, I met Brooke uh, via social media uh, a couple of months ago. And uh, for the she, first time again? For the very first time. How did that contact come about? Uh, well, she, uh, I was talking with my sister, and my sister said that her daughter had a meeting through one of those ancestry sites with mm -hmm. Brooke. So my niece and Brooke reached out to each other, and so my niece asked her, how did you, um, how are you related to me? And she, because my niece said, well, I know most of all of my uncles and aunties kids, and I never met you before. And that's when she brought up ancestry. And then she says, well, who is your mom? And she asked her about her mom, but she didn't know her mom. So she asked her, well, my told her my dad's name is Michael Graves. And that's when my niece told, told her, that's my uncle, that's my mom's brother. Plaintiff Michael Graves says he never knew the defendant existed until a few months ago, but he believes she may be his biological daughter. So he petitioned the court for a paternity test. Let me hear from you, young lady, give me some background here. Well, um, for 32 years, I've always wanted to know who my father was. And uh, we did meet last night. And when I seen him, he does look exactly like my son. Um, I brought pictures of my son. It's pages three and four. Okay. And you say all your life you've wanted to know. What were you being told um, about my your mom, father? My mom only told me a little stuff. Like his name was Michael Graves and that he lives in L.A. And then I have an older brother. Okay. That was all she told me. Were you expressing to your mom at any point during your life that you wanted to meet him? I did. What was she saying? She That she wouldn't tell me. She just wouldn't tell me. I thought she had told you his name. She told me his name. She told me his name. And no, he lived in L.A. And I had an older brother. But when that you was say, I want to call him, Mom, mm -hmm. what I, would she say? No, and change the subject. So I didn't push it. So you began looking at what age? Um, at 18. Own. 18? At 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mom passed away when I was 18. So I started looking. Why um, did you determine to wait until she passed away? I'm sorry? Why did you determine to do it after she passed? Um, at that time when she did pass, I was, I was, um, going through stuff. Like I was homeless and everything. So I went to find my other parents. How did you become homeless? Um, when my mom died, the owners told me in the hospital that I need to move out of her house. Mm. So as I'm planning her funeral, I'm packing. Well, they gave you 30 days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then where did you have to pack and move to? Uh, I had to clear out the house we were in and my best friend moved out here from Miami mm -hmm. and I stayed with her until I got a job and was able to get my own apartment. Okay. And during the meantime, you were searching um, for Mr. Graves. And right. How did you uh, commence that search? How did you start it? So two years ago, I was telling my husband, I really want to find my father, and he said, why don't we just start out with ancestry first? And so I took the ancestry test and my cousin popped up and she asked, you know, oh, hey, how are we related? And I said, uh, well, this is my mom's name, but I really don't know my father, but um, this is the man that's on my birth certificate. And that's all I know about him. And she said, oh, wow, that's my uncle. 
And I was like, really? That's your uncle? So uh, she's like, yeah, I know him and I know your siblings as well. And I was like, wow, I didn't know I had more siblings. That's cool. And so she, uh, she was like, well, here's his Facebook. Try his Facebook first. So I tried his Facebook and I didn't get a response. What did you say? I said, hi, uh, do you know a lady by my mother's name? And um, she told me that you were my father. You're listed on the birth certificate. And I just want to see if we could take a DNA test to confirm that. How long ago was that? Two years ago. And what happened? I didn't get a response. So I was like, well, all right. I, I kind of gave up a little bit. Two years later, my the same cousin reached out to me and she said, hey, what happened to you and your search? And I was like, well, I messaged him and I didn't get a response. So I kind of just was like, forget it. And so she was like, no, 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 let me get on the top of it. So she told her mom, which is uh, Michael's sister, she told her mom and her mom was like, well, send me a picture of your mom and your birth certificate and um, we'll, we'll, we'll look. And so she sent Michael a picture of my mom and I got a call from Michael that night. Okay. And we talked and he said the reason why he ignored my message from two years ago, because he thought it was a scam and he didn't know my mom by that name. He knew her by a different name. But when he said her family name, I cried because I knew. I knew that was that was her. Plaintiff Michael Graves says he never knew the defendant existed until a few months ago. But he believes she may be his biological daughter. So he petitioned the court for a paternity test. No, it's good to know that time he became aware uh, that it wasn't a scam because, yes, you get scams on those emails and Facebook and Instagram. I've dealt with a couple even texts. Some folks text me their little scams. And uh, one time I was in a bad mood. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds interesting. <laughs> I think I might have said it before. <laughs> <laughs> that may not want to go back there, but I, when I determined it was a scam, I had a good old time with them. <laughs> so I gave some very, very, very vulgar language. <laughs> and they said, okay, I never heard from them again. <laughs> <laughs> but before that, it was everything. They even had nerve to send me, I guess they thought it would entice me, sent me pictures of women saying, these are the women I know. I can introduce you to women. By that time, I'm playing with them. I say, do you think I need you to help me with some women? <laughs> <laughs> and then they said, what's well, up? And I said something vulgar. Oh, come on, Greg. They didn't even know it was me. Greg. I mean, this Greg. Come on, Greg, don't be like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I told him, what's your address? I'll meet you there. I'll be there real soon. Since you, this is some con game. What's your address? <laughs> and they had nerve enough to put the address. I said, I'm on the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, then we just stopped talking crazy to each other. But that's what I do. I have fun with him. So I understand. See, he's nicer than me. I would have had fun with it at least. <laughs> I said, yeah. I'm your daddy. How much I owe you? <laughs> in the mail. What's your address? It'll be there in the morning. But he's a nice gentleman. He just ignored what he thought might have been some nonsense. And indeed, he found later that it was reality. And he became very excited to know the truth. And that's why we're here today. And he hasn't stopped smiling and telling <laughs> us how much he believes and hopes that you are his daughter. And I will have to say, I'm not going to open up the envelope. How about that? Just, just show the grandson's face looking 99% like you. <laughs> so I don't have to read it, but if you just insist, Michael Graves is the father. Right. <laughs> That's as the picture says. So congratulations. This is very, very good news. Have a good day. God bless you. Uh, the whole time that uh, I found out that we were going to be here, I was hoping that you were going to be my daughter. Um, the, the brief time that we spoke to each other uh, over the phone and through social media uh, had me to grow upon you. And I just felt that connection there. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, I, you know, after all these years, I never knew uh, your mom was pregnant with you. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, to find out that I have a dar- daughter so many years later uh, is really wonderful. Um, I'm happy. I'm real happy. Um, I can't, you know, I get to, I graduate December and I can't wait for you to be there. So I'm happy. I'm real happy. I feel um, complete.